أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العبدة من نزان يفقه قولي السلام عليكم My name is Dr. Suzy Ismail from Cornerstone and I'm happy to be with you again as we journey through Ramadan resilience and understanding how to rebuild our homes, our hearts, our souls, our self-esteem and our self-confidence by better understanding mental and emotional health and the impact on our relational and social well-being from a spiritual perspective. We've been talking a lot about the environmental aspects that may lead to difficulties in our mental health. And we've talked a little bit about parenting and children, the relationship between parents and children, but it's also important to talk about the relationship between spouses and the impact that a relationship with a spouse um, or a relationship with someone who is very close to you that you view as a, a, you know, someone who is a partner in life and how that may impact your response to the world. One of the aspects that we see in terms of loss that we had talked about previously, or hunger that we had also talked about previously, is that hungering for affection, the feeling that you are not loved. We see it with children who may say, my parents don't love me. We see it with spouses who say, my spouse doesn't love me. We see it among friends, you know, companionship, which is starting to become a bit of a, a lost art having that companionship, that suhbah, that really nurtures your well-being. And we see that there is this feeling that there is a loss of love or a lack of love. When we talk about love, we look at it in, in light of the different love languages that we may use to express love. There's a wonderful little resource, a book uh, by Gary Chapman called The Five Languages of Love. And in it, he talks about five different ways in which we give love and receive love, and the expectations that we may have linked to the concept of love. And those five ways are service, gifting, affirmation, time, and touch. Now, many times we'll see children, teenagers, who may be sitting in one of our counseling offices at Cornerstone, and the teenager may say something like, my parents don't love me. I know that they don't love me. And we may ask the child, well, how do you know that? And the child may say something like, they never say I love you. They have never once said that they were proud of me. They never say I did a good job. All they do is criticize. And then we may bring the parents in and we may ask the parents and say, you know, your child feels like they're not loved. What's going on? And the parents may turn to the child and the father may say something like, what are you talking about? I just spent $400 on buying you that pair of Yeezys that you wanted. You know, how is that not showing you that I love you? And the mom might say something like, I cook all these meals for you. I drop you off at soccer and I pick you up. How can you say I don't love you? And what we see happening in that situation where the child may feel defeated and depleted because the child feels unloved, it's a difference in languages of love. The child is speaking the language of affirmation, seeking words that can uplift him or her. The father is speaking the language of gifting. He's showing his love by purchasing items for the child. The mother is speaking the language of service. She's doing things, right? She's cleaning, she's cooking, she's taking the child to their different practices and things. And yet, in that family dynamic, there feels like there is a loss of love. And so when we talk about that loss of love or the feeling of a lack of love impacting our mental and emotional well-being, we also want to take a step back and understand how are those around me exhibiting love and what is my love language? Why am I not feeling it? Is there really no love or is the love being exhibited differently? So when we look, for example, at the situation of suhba, seeking out friendships, seeking out connections, Again, it's a very lonely road when you feel like there's no one that sees you, that hears you, that validates you. And a lot of times it's about finding spaces in which shared love can flourish. So maybe it is about going to a measured program. Maybe it is about going to a soup kitchen and helping out. Maybe it's about visiting uh, an elderly center and working with those who are elderly. But finding what you love, first of all, then engaging in spaces that can nurture that love and then surrounding yourself with those who you will love and who will love you for the sake of Allah as you're doing something that's pleasing to Allah. So if you are feeling a lack of love, a loss of love, take a step back. Ask yourself if your spouse, if your parent, if your friend 
is exhibiting love, but maybe in a different language. Have that conversation with your parents, with your child, with your spouse, with your friend. Don't ignore it. Be aware of the problem and, and work through it because it's important to feel that validation and that sense of love. So I hope that you'll continue to join us by watching ITV USA as we continue to understand mental, emotional, relational, and social well-being through a spiritual lens. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum.